Welcome to this webinar. My name is Geoffroy Malherbe and I have the pleasure to introduce this event. The biologic landscape is evolving and when 70% of new drug approvals are expected to be biologics by 2020, they all start somewhere. Maybe if you're attending this webinar, it may be because you are preparing to develop one of those biologics. If that is the case and you want to know what tools can help you make a smart start, then you are in the right place. Biologics development has become an increasingly hard game with constantly rising development costs and constantly shrinking sales forecasts at commercial stage. Hence, early stage bioprocess developers need to keep on raising their game in terms of developability. By that, it's understood that smart ways to increase one's chances has become necessity rather than luxury. Any time wasting source must be addressed systematically in areas such as process transfer and scale up, IP licenses negotiations, as well as downstream process development. Today, our agenda will take you through transient expression strategies and stable cell lines technologies and advice with Nan Yang and Pirko Muhonen from our field science. Then Anthony Perret and Zoltan Gulias will take you through some key innovative tools to invest early in saving time respectively in process transfers and DSP development. Throughout the course of the webinar, you are much invited to ask your questions via the WorkCast platform we will be delighted to address all questions in our final Q&A. Few words about Thermo Fisher Scientific. Our mission is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. With 70,000 employees, we do enjoy an unbelievable multidisciplinary environment with a 1 billion annual R&D spend to fuel a 5,000 scientists innovation engine. We do offer solutions that enable you to push the boundaries of innovation, whatever your field is. Today, we will focus on a somewhat standardized scenario, assuming the product is a MAB or a closed biologic. But please note that we collaborate with a wide array of therapeutic formats. Those include viral vectors, various classes of recombinant or transgenic proteins, and the great variety of vaccine formats from most expression systems used. Within the group, our bioproduction division gives you access to decades of experience collaborating with our customers to bring biotherapeutics successfully. Our solutions span across the bioproduction workflow and are often grounded in the science provided by our earlier research colleagues. The bioproduction by design wheel summarizes the most unique aspects of collaborating with Thermo Fisher Scientific in bioproduction. With that, let me introduce Nan Yang, who travels extensively throughout Europe, Middle East, Africa to support our customers about protein production. She will provide an update about current transient expression trends to accelerate your bioprocess development. Thanks, Geoffroy. Hi, my name is Nan Yang, and I'm the senior field application scientist supporting email customers. So following the trend in protein expression, I'll be focusing on the malian expression, especially in TRO. So first, let's take a look at the two main mammalian cells, human embryonic kidney cells, HEC293, and the Chinese hamster ovary cells, CHO or CHO cells. HEC293 has been the most common cell line for transient expression as it's highly transfectable with satisfactory expression levels. As for CHO, it's the predominant cell line for stable expression in large-scale production, and it's more difficult to transfect with lower yields for many proteins. But some proteins that are difficult to express in HEC293 cells may have a better expression in TRO cells. TRO cells also 
have a faster growth than hexanitary cells and can grow to high densities, particularly in bioreactors. Here, we touched on transient and stable expression, so let me just briefly explain the differences. Right, so transient protein expression is a short-term expression of recombinant proteins. The gene of interest is not stably integrated into the cell's genome. Protein can be harvested after two, four to 12 days. And for stable protein expression, on the other hand, it's a long-term expression of recombinant proteins using an engineered stable cell line. So the gene of interest is stably integrated into the cell's genome after rounds of selection, isolation, adaptation, and expansion. This is a tedious process that can take two months before you go into protein expression. Taking biologics development as an example, people tend to use transient protein expression in the initial part of the process, such as gene to targets and target to lead. Going forward through clinical trials and commercialization, stable expression becomes predominant. From the cell line perspective, hexanite 3 cells are the main workhorse during the transient phase. Then, before going to, trans to stable expression in CHO, the selected leads go through further rounds of selection in CHO cells, most probably transiently. In Thermo Fisher, we understand your need for faster and reliable solutions. That's why we have worked to provide you with a more efficient transient system that can go all the way to stable. So that is the XPCHO expression system. This high density, high yield system allows you to eliminate the intermediate selection step and go directly to stable. So let's take a look how this is done. The GECO strategy to maximize transient protein yields is that every single component is developed and optimized to work harmoniously together to achieve higher titer, higher reproducibility, and scalability. These include the cells, media, transfection regions, vector, and booster, rate, booster agents. To make it easier, a starter kit containing all necessary components is available. It allows up to three grams per liter of protein titer from a transient system that enables you to start in CHO and stay in CHO. Now let's take a closer look at individual components. First of all, the ex vitro cells. So the cell, these ex vitro cells are a subclone that is derived from the CHO S cells and are adapted for high density culture of 20 million cells per mil. Its doubling time is about 17 hours, as you can see from the graph on the right. Ex vitro cells exhibit stable growth and expression profile over many passages. These can't be achieved without the expression medium of ex vitro, because originally the CHO media were developed only for stable expression due to the low transient productivity in CHO cells. So they don't meet the transient expression requirements. The ex vitro medium is a residue use, chemically defined, animal origin free, serum free, and protein free medium. And it's also manufactured under CGMP guidelines. It does not only support the high density growth and high expression of the XPCHO cells, but it's also matched the XPCHO feed. As you can see in the graph, over passages, the VCD and the viability curves show stable growth of XPCHO cells. With the XP Fectamin Cho transfection reagents, we can achieve up to 90% transfection efficiency 72 hours post transfection. It is used directly from the fridge with a shorter complex ingestion time of less than five minutes. You can also either dilute the XP Fectamin Cho reagents with a plasmid DNA or add its need to twofold diluted plasmid DNA. One day after transfection, now you're done with it, you can add the ex vitro feed, which is matched to the ex vitro expression medium and supports high-density transfection for long expression runs. 
the best time to add the first feed is about 18 to 22 hours post transfection but the timing of the second feed is flexible as you can see in the graph at the right bottom corner the enhancer is often an important component as you can see in graph a on the top right bottom the addition of the feed and a combination of enhancer and feed greatly improves the titer and the enhance and feed can be pre-mixed to save you some more time. The XP Factamin Show Enhancer the same, is the same as the feed. They don't need to be pre-warmed and you can use them directly from the fridge. And we also recommend our vectors PCDNA 3.3 or 3.4 to give you the highest yield possible. as we're talking about DNA. So we have found out that um, the optimal DNA concentration for XP Cho expression system is generally between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 microgram of DNA per milliliter of culture. If you add on too much DNA, that will add on toxicity for the cells and the expression will be negatively impacted. And as I said, we do recommend PCDNA 3.3 or 3.4 and especially that the PCDNA 3.4 contains the WPRE elements that will further boost your yield. After showing you all the components, I'd just like to show you briefly uh, the expression titers for several different proteins. So for human IgG, uh, XB Cho system has increased the titer 160 times over other Cho systems, whereas erythropoietin 25 times and rapid IgG 95 times. The system is also scalable. Here we're showing examples of shake flasks, mini bowel reactors, or somebody, some people call them spin tubes. It's like a 50 ml cycle tube with the vented top. Also down to 24 deep well plates and as well as 96 deep well plates. The titers are all comparable to the flask, shake flask titers that we have used to benchmark the system. I'd like to also show you some recent publications that are available if you want to have more information. This is a screenshot from our website. We also have other technical support. For example, we have our protocols and applications online. We also have videos featuring our lead scientists on how to handle the cells to have optimal expression. Of course, we have our technical support and also me um, available if you need any support. So if you remember this slide that I showed before, XP Show system not only allows you to carry on your transient work more efficiently, but also it bridges smoothly into stable production. My colleague Pickle will help you to go through the transient to, to stable and especially stable production part of our portfolio. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nan. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you for attending the webinar today. So my name is Pirko Mohonen, and uh, I work as a field application scientist at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and I'm specialized in bioproduction cell line and media solutions. So as Nan already has introduced the transient protein expression solutions, I will be focusing the next 15 minutes on our stable production solutions. I also introduce our cell culture medium and supplement offering that can help you to optimize your early developing research all the way to the clinical studies. So I will start by introducing our new product called XPCO Stable Production Medium. And I'm focusing on the main pain points in protein production, how to seamlessly transition from research scale to commercial scale. So currently researchers are demanding higher titers in transient system. As Nan has already explained, we, are currently, we currently have XPCO transient expression kit on the market with high producing XPCO a cell line. When you are going through your stable clone development process and heading towards commercial production phase, that is when you can transition from transient expression system to our XPCO stable production system. 
these two components are completely integrated to one system, creating a one complete solution for you. Xbit show stable production medium is available as liquid or as AGT. ATT stands for Advanced Granulation Technology, and the unique granulated format offers fast dissolution and mixing time. There is no need for additional pH assessment, and it also saves storage space as it takes less space than liquid wood. This slide demonstrates the difference between transient and stable workflow. While in a transient workflow, you can get single transient production batch, and if you need more material, you would need to repeat the whole workflow. In addition, when you're harvesting your transient production at day 14, the cells are not in their peak performance state anymore. In the stable workflow, the cells are transfected in Expito expression medium with the vector of your choice. At any stage after transfection, the cells can be directly adapted to stable production medium. The main benefit of using Expito stable system is that you can do the clone selection and single cell cloning in the same medium without a need for additional medium optimization. Expito's stable production media comes with the full protocol describing and guiding step-by-step -step the creation of stable clones for use in bioproduction. Once you have stable expressing clones, you can create CMP cell banks in Expito uh, stable production medium. Just know that the XPCHO uh, stable production medium doesn't contain glutamine and can be supplemented with glutamax or glutamine during the limited dilution stage. Here you can see an example of stable XPCHO as close scalability into our high performance 50 liters single use bioreactor. This was a set batch process by using 2x efficient PC. And uh, you can also use additional glucose feed if necessary. As you can see, the viable cell density peaks around five days and holds on up to 18 days. The IGT titer is over three grams per liter during the culture time. In summary, the stable production medium has been developed for seamless transition from the transient system to stable protein expression. It is important to note here that there is no adaptation needed when moving from the expression medium to stable production medium. And also I wanted to highlight that the XPCO stable production system provides a protocol guiding through the whole process of creating stable clones. So with the XPCO system, you can use your own plasmic constructs. However, if you're interested in using a complete stable cell line development kit, then the freedom kits are the best fit for you. We have developed two kits, one for show S cells and the other one show DT44 host cells. The kits come with a complete workflow with easy step-by-step -step protocol. The purchase of each kit go freedom show S or DT44 kits come together with an automatic research license. If you plan to utilize the molecules or proteins produced beyond research use, for example, in clinical trials, you would require commercial production license from us. This is one of payments and you will get the full cell line document package after purchasing the license. Customers nowadays need low IP burden, high titers, short timelines and cell lines with a clear background. These have become our goals and approaches. Through the Keep Code Show Freedom platform, we are able to deliver stable clones with industry standard titers using GMP band cells. The whole workflow can be achieved with a single chemically defined animal origin free medium that also supports large scale production. Importantly, the customer will enjoy the freedom away from milestone or royalty payments with applications to multiple, multiple molecules. These freedom show Cell line development kits are to help you to get faster to the market. This slide shows the general timelines from vector construction to master cell bank. The Joe's pathway takes up 30 weeks. And the DT44 path takes 39 weeks, and this is down to the amplification step. These timelines also include the stability assessment up to 60 generations. While you're using these kits, you will also have access to our team of experts 
that can support you during the cell line development process. Here is a case study done together with Valin Technologies. They used our Freedom OS kit and successfully selected four lead candidates and scaled up to a task kit bioreactor for 12 days. The base medium dynamics was fed with efficient feed C+, and they reached tighter 2.4 grams per liter and high specific productivity over the 12 days of culture. Depending on your resources, you can also choose from our comprehensive portfolio of cell line development solutions. We can assist you at any step in the stable cell line development workflow, including vector construction, transfection and selection, stability assessment, all the way to the master cell banking. We offer very flexible services to tailor a solution to fit your needs. We can extend the services to cover also media and process development if needed. Our cell line development services uses the same Freedom OS and DT44 host cells and the protocols that are available at the Freedom Kit. All cell lines have different nutritional needs and therefore we have developed three different base media, CD of the Joe, Dynamis and CD Joe. Our matched efficient feed family can also be used as 2x or 3x concentrates, which can increase your bioreactor use. Kipco glycanthin feed can be used to increase galactosylation in your end product. And if you notice that your productivity drops but vi viability stays high, you can use function, function mass titer enhancer to boost the specific productivity. Then tested with our own DT44 and Joe West cell lines, our Joe panel outperformed catalog media for both clones in a simple set batch experience. Endpoint tighter productivity was increased by up to 70% for the GOS clone and 30% uh, for the DT44 clone versus the catalog media. We have received feedback from numerous customers that the panel has performed positively for other types of Joe clones as well. On this slide, I will explain how peptones and chemically defined supplements can quickly and cost effectively improve cell culture performance. Peptones are a rich source of amino acids, peptides, vitamins, carbohydrates, minerals, and many other components. Therefore, they can serve as an optimal nutritional source for cells, and they can also offer additional benefits to the cells, for example, protection against toxic metabolites, and they have shown to increase specific productivity and increase cell densities. These supplements are suitable for a wide range of cell lines and products. Since every supplement and feed is different and each cell line has unique nutritional requirements, it is critical to evaluate a wide range of peptones or chemically defined supplements to identify the ones that work best for your particular cell line and production process. To help you to screen and find the best peptone and supplement for your process, we have developed three different Kipco peptone starter packs containing different animal origin free or animal origin peptones, and also the KIPCO research chemically defined pack for five different chemically defined supplements. Perfect pairing of your base medium peptones and CD supplements can enhance protein production and deliver the desired level of protein quality from the very start of the research all the way to the commercial scale production. So this was all today, what I wanted to talk about our stable production tools and services. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or our licensing team. Hello, um, I'm very pleased to welcome you in this uh, section. Um, my name is Anthony Perret. I am in charge of bioprocessing equipment and automation projects for southwest of Europe in some official bioproduction. In the next slides, uh, we'll have the pleasure to present our last bioprocess control platform, uh, especially uh, thought uh, for R&D and process development and called TrueBio Discovery. The objective of this novel platform is really to offer you a reliable and flexible technology for scale up and tech transfer and allowing you to focus on your first mission, which we believe is to produce efficient and high quality molecules. As an introduction, let's, let me present briefly bioprocessing equipment and automation. We are part of some official bioproduction division. 
And our mission is to bring our biopharmaceutical customers flexible and intuitive tools to reduce complexity and capital investment from benchtop to GMP facilities, where the data management and validation are essential. We are in charge of the single-use equipment projects, including control equipment and IT data management systems. R&D and tech transfer to GMP are today facing different obstacles. Data are more, most of the time fragmented on different lab devices. Also, data management is quite often manual. Sometimes the tech transfer is just not transferable due to incompatibility between softwares and communication protocols. This creates difficulties in reporting, and this is time-consuming to meet regulatory standards. Thus, we see more and more projects focusing from the early stage on data management decision because this will impact the risk and the cost. When we ask our customers what are the main concerns, they are answering. First, that they need a digitalized data management system able to store to, to achieve the reports for their future projects. Then, because of the challenge to stay compliant to regulatories, they need this data management system to be quite robust and reliable. But the third concern is about the simplification of their software platform. Our customers are aware of the variety of softwares and need efficiency and simplicity and why not a common solution? Here are the two challenges we committed to address. First, in order to improve time to market due to what we call the Iceland of automation with different automation approaches from benchtop to GMP facilities, we decided to provide, to provide one automation hardware and software platform from process development to GMP commercial production. And secondly, in order to optimize the capital investment, the same platform will be used in pilot plant in order to meet CGMP requirements. This is why we developed the TrueBio Discovery, which is a workstation-based control that provides the power and functionality of TrueBio software associated to the Emerson Delta V control system platform to non-GMP laboratories. The Emerson Delta V is a distributed control system which is, unlike to local PLC automates, able to manage many vessels management simultaneously. We decided to take benefit of our experience of the Delta V automation platform for GMP projects, but to adapt it to a lighter and non-GMP solution dedicated to the R&D lab. We then implemented our TrueBio bioprocessing software. The solution is a versatile and open architecture platform able to control multiple by uh, benchtop bioreactors from different technologies and suppliers. This allows to easily transfer data during tech transfer and reduce the bench space. This TrueBio Discovery software, developed for non-GMP purpose, will improve the tech transfer and reduce the time using the common TrueBio and Delta V platform. This reduces the bench spare requirement and investment compared to the conventional Delta V platform with no compromise on modularity and flexibility. The TrueBio discovery makes possible to control bioreactors from 1 to 50 liters in volume from Thermo Fisher, but also from third-part vessels like Eppendorf BioBlue or Sartorius glass vessels. The same TrueBio software 
is also available for conventional Delta V controllers for R&D and pilot plant needing GMP compliant lab system up to 250 liter volume. Our TrueBio software is a pre-engineered and developed solution for process control and data management in bioprocessing. As you see on this drawing, this is a one solution software from R&D to commercial manufacturing. It makes easy the training and use throughout your full process for historian, batch management, alarm notification, and recipes. The TrueBio software is associated to our high performer controller range from G3 Lab to G3 Pro controller. G3 Lab is universal and able to take control of benchtop equipment. G3 Pro is also universal and dedicated to single use large vessels. Now let's speak about universality. It's not only the ability to control different kinds of vessel mixers, bioreactors, and fermenters, but also to swap from one to another depending on your production campaigns. But it's also giving the possibility to use vessels from different vendors, bringing you flexibility to your process manufacturing plant. Let's now resume. This TrueBio discovery is completing our innovative partnership approach. We are offering a Delta V based approach, which avoids the multiplication of local PLC controllers. The TrueBio software is including all of the useful hardware needed, such as the motors, the sensors, on a pre existing solution. A remote maintenance is possible. Also, the same TrueBio software will be used from R&D to manufacturing. One only training is needed. No software programmers are needed because TrueBio is a user configurable software with a limitless combination of process strategy setup. As a conclusion, TrueBio Discovery will allow you to save, transfer, and load data during R&D and scale up to the pilot and commercial process with the same software. You'll be able to tune the perfect recipe on TrueBio and save data thanks to the robust and secure Delta V platform. Using the same TrueBio software, you'll minimize the training requirement for technicians. We really think that this new technology is perfectly fitting our bioproduction portfolio to bring you flexibility, reduce time to market, and help you developing tomorrow's molecule for patients. Many thanks for your attention. I will be delighted to answer to your questions in the next minute, or feel free to contact me. Hello, everyone, and thank you for your time and interest. My name is Zoltan Goyash, and I'm the field application specialist for purification covering northern and eastern Europe. Downstream process development for biologics usually have to wait for the upstream development for representative material to work with and the finalized analytical assays to ensure that the chosen and optimized steps are able to ensure the required product quality and recovery. Instead of simply waiting and thereby risking the strict development timelines, Downstream process developers are investigating how they can leverage information and know-how about earlier molecules, processes, and previously used solutions. In the next few minutes, I would like to talk about our solutions for early stage PD and the possible approaches for your consideration. We at Thermo Fisher Scientific can cover the entire bioproduction workflow and we offer two chromatographic resin lines that are complementing each other nicely. The porous resins with ion exchange and Higgs surface chemistries provide high capacity, 
high resolution and high productivity at the same time. Therefore, they are ideal candidates for non-affinity capture and polishing applications. These resins are developed and manufactured in Bedford, Massachusetts in the United States. The Capture Select resin family is a large portfolio of affinity resins for antibodies, proteins, and biovectors, enabling high purity and recovery in a single step. These resins enable platform purifications for dimension targets, similarly to the protein A-based MAP processes. These resins are developed and manufactured in the Netherlands. The porous and the bioprocess grade capture select resins are fully CGMT compliant and they are already used in many late stage and commercial processes. In order to fulfill the demands, the production plants are able to produce high resin quantities. The capture select ligands can be produced in up to 15,000 liter fermentation scale and the porous resins up to 250 liter volume scale. Both beans offer custom resin development services, and as you will see, a custom affinity solution is perhaps the most powerful and convenient tool if you're developing molecules without any specific and readily available purification method on the market. The Capture Select technology uses the LAMAS and their unique heavy chain only antibodies called Camelid IG. These antibodies have the same specificity as the standard IgGs, but the variable regions have only heavy domains, which makes them simpler and much more stable. The variable region of these commonly IgGs will become the ligand by coupling it to agarose and porous backbones. The workflow starts with hundreds of different candidates and we screen for specificity, my dilution conditions, and ligand stability. The genetic code of the final candidate is then put into yeast and the ligands are produced in an alimo origin free manufacturing process. We've been using this workflow for a decade now, and many of our products are used in commercial processes. If you would like to have an affinity solution and thereby a robust platform DSP for, for your molecule, we can develop a custom capture select resin for you. The applied workflow consists of five work packages and is the very same regardless of this being an internal development project or a custom project for a customer. The project starts with the library construction and the immunization of LAMAS can be performed for up to five, six different molecules at the same time. We strongly recommend to think well ahead because we do not charge extra for the additional molecules and the 10 weeks of library construction for future molecules can be saved immediately. We have created many libraries for different targets already and we may have one for your molecule in our storage room. The second step is the high throughput screening based method using BICOR to identify the most suitable candidates. We screen for specificity, my dilution conditions, and ligand stability. We can use the actual or planned process conditions for binding and elution to make the resin fully compatible with your molecule. Once we have the top for six candidates, the sequences are expressed in yeast and the scale-up studies are performed. In work package four, the created prototypes are then tested by the customer using real-life feed stream and conditions. At the end of work package four, the chosen candidate can be considered the final product. Therefore, the PD can be continued by the customer in lab or even pilot scale for the toxicological and non-clinical studies. The work package 5 is called the bioprocess grade upgrade, which turns the research use only resin into a fully CGMP compliant product. It consists of three main activities on our end, validation of the production process, development of the leakage ELISA for QC purposes, and compilation of the regulatory support file for filing. The execution of this work package requires six to eight months, but we can perform it in parallel with the previously explained PD activities. As you can see, we can create resins between 22 and 38 weeks. Thus, the prototypes or even the final resin can be available in the lab by the time the upstream part of the process has been established. The portfolio slide highlights the three main areas we are developing resins for. These are recommend proteins and enzymes, antibody and antibody related products, and biovectors. The rows represent the work packages and as I said, the bioprocess and research use only products are available off the shelf. If any of the research use only resins would be of interest to you, 
This can be upgraded to bioprocess grade as well by performing the work package 5 I already described. The following slides will show you case studies on the highlighted resins, which can be evaluated in early stage PV thanks to their unique selectivity and versatility. The Capture Select FC XR resin binds to the FC region of more than antibodies, but instead of targeting the CH2 CH3 interface, which is the protein A binding site, it binds to the CH3 domain. FCXL works well for all IgG subclasses, and elution at minor pH is also possible with additives such as magnesium chloride. If the protein A is not able to provide high recovery or no longer working because the target molecule has no longer the protein A binding site, the FCXL can be a great alternative for affinity capture. The unique selectivity of FCXL could be utilized by Roche in Pennsburg in this case study. The original process required three polishing step, steps instead of the routinely applied two because protein A could not be used and the selected affinity resin was not able to provide the required purity. The additional polishing step caused then facility fit issues. With the implementation of FCXL in the rework process, Roche could omit one of the polishing steps, improve the impurity profile and pool stability, and switch to a more environmentally friendly regeneration solution as well. On our end, the second generation of FCXL with increased capacity will be launched shortly. The next example is our porous capture select AVX resin. Similarly to the protein A for MAPS, AVX works well for all standard AAV serotypes and even for the engineered captive as shown by the data currently provided by Jinthon in France. My third example is the C tag, a small four amino acid tag on the C terminal end of the molecule which is the only bottleneck of its application. The C-TAG and the Capture Select C-TAG XR resin can provide higher purity and recovery than the commonly applied HIS-TAG and IMAC resin, thanks to the higher selectivity of the proper immunoaffinity resin. Leaching of metal ions into the product is not an issue with the C-TAG XL either. With the use of C-TAG and or resin in the malaria vaccine project, the Jenner Institute in the UK was able to develop a commercially viable process for clinical trials and future commercial production. As mentioned earlier, the porous resins are ideal for quick and robust non-affinity capture and polishing thanks to the rigidity of the beads and their high capacity and high resolution at the same time. Some of our ion exchangers are also sold around up to 15 millisiemens per centimeter Therefore, supernatants or high conductivity solutions can be loaded directly onto these resins. This attribute supports the fast high throughput screenings and simplifies the DST processes in larger scale. My final slide enlists the different formats we offer for process development. All resins are available in 200 and 600 microliter robo columns depending on the product line, 1 mil and 5 mil prepack columns in minochrome format and in loose format to pack your own columns. Some of our capture select ligands on porous beads are available in HPLC columns for quantification purposes, and most of the capture select ligands are available in biotin or alexidi conjugates for analytical assays. I already mentioned the leakage ELISAs for the bioprocess grade capture select resin for QC purposes. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or you would like to evaluate any of our resins. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Zoltan. Um, so this opens our Q&A for that webinar. So for all participants on the right hand of your screen, you will find an ask a question uh, section. And we invite you, we have, uh, yeah, we have a good 10 minutes of Q&A today. 
so to ask our, our experts about all your follow-on questions. So uh, please uh, go to the ask a question section and uh, and you can uh, you can find um, the opportunity to to ask what you may want. Um, indeed, as everybody are entering their questions, I'd like just to go back through the agenda to uh, wrap up on the presentation um, section. So indeed, after the introduction, we have had uh, Nan Yang um, bring us up to speed about uh, the transient expression strategies optimization and the role that the uh, upstream and cell line technology plays in that area followed by uh, Pirko Mahonen, who will explain us how to successfully move into um, a stable expression for your target molecule, um, followed by Anthony Perrin, who explained and introduced the next generation benchtop controlling systems, which in practice does deliver the power of a distributed control system for R&D. And uh, Zoltan Gulli has just closed with uh, custom ligand development and other early downstream process development tools. So we hope that this overview of available technologies to successfully um, start your process development journey have been useful to yourself. And with that, let's move on um, to the questions. So the first question is about benchtop bioreactor automation. So um, that's a question for Anthony Perret. Knowing that true biodiscovery is made for R&D non-GMP, what is the possibility to export data to GMP? Hello, Jeff. Uh, hello, everybody. Do you, do you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, perfect. So thanks a lot for this, uh, for this question. Um, I would answer that uh, the, the possibility is not really to export the data, um, but it's to export uh, what is called the um, load file. Um, the load file is um, a culture strategy um, that we that you will develop as a customer on our uh, supervision uh, through bio software, and um, you will be able then to uh, send it to a, to a GMP system. Uh, and this is uh, uh, this is saving a lot of time and development transfer, um, uh, so that you can develop from from R and D and send it to uh, uh, to a bigger system in GMP. I hope this is answering the question. Yes, some other of the question related to this uh, presentation. And we have an additional question. Um, would you recommend peptone supplementation to accelerate media development, or is this approach outdated? Thanks. OK, um, this is Birk Mohan, and I think this question is for me. Um, I would start uh, evaluating the peptones in the early stage as early as possible, so that then you know how you can scale up and use the same systems in a bioreactor. Did this answer Great. your question? Great. Thank you, Perko. You're welcome. Um, another question is, when do you think is the right time to move from transient to stable? Uh, 
Hi, this is Pierre Corgan. Um, well, uh, <laughs> um, I think it uh, depends on, on your own kind of uh, work schedule, but uh, um, when you can see like good results in a transient um, expression, you can you can move on to the uh, stable production at any stage. Especially when you are using if you are using the XPCO system, it's made really easy to transition from the um, transient expression to stable production. Great, thank okay, you. Very nice. Another question coming in um, for Zoltan. Uh, do you have practical case studies of previously having developed an affinity solution while your client was developing the upstream? Hi, this is Zoltan speaking. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, actually, we have multiple programs usually um, in parallel, and uh, previously we developed the Poros Capture Select AV8 and 9 resins uh, along with the customer, and, and those are um, off-the-shelf products now, and uh, everyone can use them, but, but it was not always the case. So we work together with the customer and uh, uh, this customer provided um, upstream material and also feedback on how to optimize and develop the resin. I hope this answers the question. Yeah, I think they'll be ju they'll do just fine, Zoltan. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, Remco, for for supporting as well. Um, so I think that unless another additional question from a particip from a participant comes up, I think the, that was the bulk of um, of today's questions. So again, um, you know, I would like to thank all all our speakers today and um, and thank all our participants for for their time. So um, after today's uh, webinar, we hope. We helped you get a better visibility about uh, technology nuggets to help you be successful with uh, the, the development of um, biologics in, in very early phases. As said, whatever your molecule may be, um, our range of collaboration is very broad and we'll be very happy to, to support you and make you benefit from our experience in supporting a very large number of biologic development. So thanks very much for your time. We hope you enjoyed the webinar and um, let's stay tuned for more content to come in the coming uh, months. Um, happy uh, season's holiday. In the meantime, talk very soon. Thank you.